Hello everyone and welcome to Sugoi Japan YouTube channel. So as you can see, I'm still at home, but we're gonna go out together in Tokyo and uh, today we're gonna visit Shinjuku. So it's gonna be a little bit different video than usual. You know, I used to do the walking videos, but today I'm gonna guide you a little bit more and we're gonna see the top 10 things to do in Shinjuku. 10, 10 things I love to do in Shinjuku. Uh, it's a very beautiful day today actually. So I think it's gonna be cool. Let's go. Okay, so I'm ready to go. And as you can see, the weather is super beautiful. I'm gonna use my bike. This is my bike to uh, go to the train station first, and then it's gonna be like a 10 minute ride uh, with the Otaku line. See you there. I just arrived in Shinjuku and the first thing you will do, even if you don't want to, is to get lost in Shinjuku station, <laughs> all right? So whether you like it or no, you're gonna get lost, especially if it's your first time you come here. Uh, it's a very busy uh, station. It's actually the busiest station in the world. It has a, like a Guinness record and uh, I think it's like around 3 million uh, people come like every day, transit every day from here. So let's take a tour a little bit and let's get lost in Shinjuku. So I finally got out from Shinjuku station. It was actually not too bad today. It wasn't that busy and I got used to it. So the, the trick is to find the, the right exit to take, but there's like around 200 exits in a, like a Shinjuku train station. So you need to pick up the, the right one and uh, you should be all right. <laughs> so, okay, now we go to the second destination. The second thing to do uh, in Shinjuku and it's gonna be Shinjuku Gyoen Park. So I just arrived at the entrance of Shinjuku Gyoen Park. It's a paid park, so uh, you have to pay an entrance fee and it's actually 500 uh, yen, as you can see. So it's around uh, $5 and it closed a little bit early. So you need to check uh, what time it closed. So today it closed at four, but I still have time to enjoy it. So as you will see, Shinjuku Gyoen Garden is actually a super, super big garden. And it takes uh, really almost half a day actually to, uh, to visit it. Also, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of, uh, of the garden and uh, mostly the Japanese traditional garden, which is this way. I'm shooting this video at uh, the end of October and uh, 
uh, as you may know like autumn is actually one of the best seasons to visit japan and uh, as you can see here the leaves are slowly turning like from red from sorry from green to yellow and then red and it's gonna be like uh, red probably at the end of november so in one month so i will probably do another video about uh, like autumn in tokyo so stay tuned and don't forget to follow Sugal Japan. So another thing to do in Shinjuku is of course shopping because there are so many, so many shops uh, over here. Uh, you can buy almost everything like clothes and all the stuff you need. It can be electronics as well. Uh, but today we're gonna go to a famous shop called Don Quixote. I think most of people know it. It's really good to buy souvenirs, but also to buy food, snacks, all these kind of things. So let's go. It's just behind me and we're going to take the escalator and we're going to go. So we are not going to visit all the shop because it's going to take too much time. Uh, but the best probably one of the best things to buy in uh, in Don Quixote is probably the snacks because they have so many kind of snack oh, here you go demon slayers sweet things also like salty stuff they are almost everything and I know a lot of you guys like Japanese snacks so here is your paradise because like really you have a lot of kind of snacks and they have a very nice like packaging so in almost uh, in Japan like they have uh, they, they put a lot of uh, like effort in the packaging but look at this for example oh my god looks so cute Pikachu so yeah Don Quixote in Shinjuku there are lots actually in, uh, in, uh, in Tokyo in general but this one is pretty cool and uh, you can come and buy almost everything oh, here you go yeah. Korean uh, like noodles Beauty products as well, food in general. Another thing to note about like uh, Don Quixote is actually the prices because it's usually pretty cheap comparing to a lot of shops in, uh, in Japan. So it's uh, a good place to come and buy some souvenirs or some snacks for kind of a cheap price. I'll just give you an example. Like for example, this Cranky which I actually like it's just 150 yen, so it's one dollar and a half and you can get two at three dollars actually so yeah the prices are, are pretty good in Don Quixote so the next destination is Tokyo Metropolitan Government building look at this it's a huge 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 building in, uh, in Shinjuku and uh, it's a government building so maybe uh, you want to ask why I'm talking about it because they have an observatory and you can go to the top of the building and they have actually two observatories uh, and uh, you can have a beautiful view of Tokyo for free so it's free so it's really good but unfortunately I just went there and they told me it's closed because of the the, the pandemic basically we are not in a state of emergency anymore but it's still closed which is a little bit surprising but still like uh, i think it's one thing to do in, in shinjuku hopefully it, uh, it happens very soon so when you come to shinjuku it's good to come here to enjoy the view uh, sunset time is probably the best but also night time is really good look at this so big So now we are going to one of the most beautiful bar in uh, Tokyo actually and it's called the New York Bar and it's famous because it was featured in the Lost in Translation uh, like movie so you probably are already have seen it. Uh, let's go, uh, a little bit complicated to go, I have to go first to the 41st floor and then change to the 50 second, uh, to another elevator and then 50 second. Let's go. Okay, so almost there. I was in 41st floor, it was actually very beautiful already uh, but now we are going to the 52 like floor where you can see the yeah, New York Grill Bar Wow! I just arrived at the New York Bar and this is the, an open kitchen actually where they prepare the meals but look at this view 
and we are super lucky because we can see Mount Fuji. Look at this. Oh my god. It's been a long time I didn't come here. But I think I'm gonna come more often. Look at that. Wow. So so beautiful. Perfect timing as well with the sunset. So it's the best is to come actually for the sunset. And as you can see, amazing view on Tokyo to Tokyo City. We're gonna try to go to the restaurant as well, if possible. I think that's, they have already some customers, but hopefully they are okay if I film a little bit over there. See you in a bit. Okay, so they were happy uh, for me to film like here as well, so it's cool because there's not a lot of customers actually. I came early for, for that. But look at this view, it looks so, so good. And if you watched uh, already the Lost in Translation uh, movie, we're gonna go to the the piano bar, you know, the, the place where uh, a lot of uh, scenes uh, like uh, took place. And it's on my left. Here we go. Do you recognize? Wow, oh, so beautiful actually. They were pretty cool to let me uh, like shoot inside actually, so that was nice. But I want to show you a little bit more of this area because it's very beautiful now we are in the 41st floor and it's very beautiful as you can see it's a luxury kind of place right but look at that the view is just amazing i don't know if you can see the Monfuchi. oh my god so beautiful almost night time so it was actually perfect timing wow going to show you another area of the 41st floor i think it's a it's a restaurant as well but it, it's on the other side so you don't have the view on mont fuji but you have a pretty nice view as well it's just here on my right side, on the right side. I don't know the name of this this restaurant, but it looks super beautiful. Let's continue. And I think over there, there's like a, a bar or something, something like that. I wasn't sure. Maybe just the lobby because there's actually a, a hotel here, the Park Hyatt Hotel. So maybe it's just the lobby of the of the hotel. But this area is super beautiful as well. Look at this, it's a little bit dark, so I hope you can see. But the view again is like really mesmerizing. It's, from that side we can see the Mount Fuji so maybe I'm gonna try to sneak and just go over there there's do you see the bamboo here it looks so beautiful actually oh yeah it's a little bit dark you cannot see really well but trust me it's very beautiful and I'm gonna try to go there on the other side Susan. ah perfect so I think it should be okay so oh wow it's actually a restaurant Wow, I want to come come back here actually. I want to have dinner here. It's probably expensive, but I think it's worth it. <laughs> oh, look at the view. I think I said wow uh, maybe 10 times like in the last two minutes. It's already the night in Shinjuku, but to be honest, I prefer Shinjuku by night. And uh, now we're gonna go to, uh, I think my favorite place in uh, Shinjuku, it's called Omoide Yokocho. Uh, it's really near here, I just need to follow this path. And we're gonna be there in five minutes.
So we are almost at Omoide Yekocho. At the moment we are just next to the station, back to the Shinjuku train station. And we're gonna take a quick left over there. And it's a little bit difficult to find, so that's why I'm actually gonna start uh, to show you from now how to go to Omoide Yokocho. So there's the Uniqlo here. And then you just go down this way. And the entrance is very small. So if you don't know it, you're never gonna see it from, uh, from the streets, from the main street. So you see the Uniqlo? You just turn right after the Uniqlo. And you're gonna arrive at Omoide Yokocho, which is a really cool place I love to go, especially by night. I'm mostly by night, actually. So you're gonna see the entrance is very small. So here we go. Do you see the green? The green like a poster? The Omoide Yokocho. So this is the entrance. And then if you go down, this is like the small entrance to Omoide Yokocho. And they changed the decoration uh, like uh, according to the season. So now it's autumn. So as you can see, there's beautiful momiji, like maple, maple tree uh, like leaves uh, here. So it's so beautiful, right? And it's very photogenic. Oh, sorry. So what is a Yokocho? Yokocho is actually a small alley where you can see a lot of izakaya. So izakaya is a small restaurant where you actually, you eat, of course you eat, so you can see. But this is mostly like a Japanese street food, like yakitori, you know, gyoza. But you come here mostly to drink and to have a small snack. It's very beautiful, as you can see, very comfy, you know, there's not so many uh, places to sit on. And you get close to the customers. So you kind of make friends very easily here. You can come alone and you are gonna leave uh, <laughs> with, with friends. So look at this, this is how it looks like. <laughs> and I'm super happy because now it's not empty anymore. During the state of emergency, it was really empty. And most of the restaurants, they were closed, but now it's back. Oh, they have like a very nice soup. Uh, with mushrooms, it's the season of mushrooms actually at the moment. Oh wow, this one is super. Yes. Ah, konnichiwa. Konbawa. <laughs> ah, ah, later, later maybe. <laughs> so he just offered me to, to sit with him actually. So I told you, I didn't lie. You can make some friends uh, very easily here. <laughs> yeah, the Japanese people are very nice. This is yakitori. Wow, I'm so happy. It's full again. Almost full, but it's pretty early today, actually. It's, I think, 7, no, 6 p.m. 6 p.m., so it's still a little bit early. Uh, this one is also looks so nice. And as you can see, it fits only maybe five, five, six people per restaurant. So, yeah, you kind of have to speak with, your, with, the, with the person just next to you. So this is the first part and then there's more, this is a kind of a, a ramen restaurant actually, very good. I come, come here often and these are the rest of the street. So you see it's so beautiful and stylish. It's a very beautiful place to take some pictures, you know. If you like taking pictures, it's uh, one of the most photogenic uh, place in, uh, in Tokyo actually, not only in Shinjuku. So yeah, Omoide Yokocho, definitely one of the things to do in, uh, top things to do in, uh, in Shinjuku. Don't miss it. It's uh, a very cool place. Better to come by night because I, actually I think it's closed uh, during the day. But you're gonna have fun for sure. So if you wanna see how you ride it, here you go. Oh my day, Yokocho, but I'm gonna put the links, you know, in the description of this, uh, this video. So, let's go to the next destination now. So now we are getting close to the crazy part of uh, Shinjuku, which is called Kabukicho. 
uh, it's just behind me. The entrance is over there, not too far. It's the red light district of uh, Shinjuku, so uh, it's uh, of Tokyo in general. So you, we're gonna see a lot of like uh, hotel bars, like girls bars, they call them as well, you know, and uh, it's gonna be fun. So we are now in the messy part of uh, Shinjuku, Kabukicho. Is the entrance is just on my left. This is one of the gates of uh, Kabukicho. As you can see, super nice, super photogenic. If I can get here, you're gonna see better the gate. So let's get to this uh, crazy area in, uh, in Shinjuku. The Kabukicho is uh, the, the red light district of Tokyo and uh, also it's famous for being the area where you see a lot of Yakuza, you know, Yakuza, the, the Japanese Mafia. So they usually run this uh, like uh, Kabakura, we call them, like girls bars and this is one of the example of uh, hot spa, you know, in uh, in Kabukicho. So they are legal, you know, it's not like really prostitution. Prostitution is illegal in Japan. But what happens in a, in a Kabakura, to be honest, nothing much, is basically you just go there and then you talk to girls and then you pay a lot of money, you know, because you have to pay the drinks of the girl and you have to pay also, there's a system, you know, you pay per hour a, a fee, you know, and you pay your drinks and your drinks are usually expensive but you just enjoy the company of a girl so this another one for example usually they write the system uh the the, the price you know in the entrance oh uh, yeah here we go so 20 minutes i think it's 2000 yen for this one so <laughs> it's a uh, very popular in uh, in japan and in tokyo especially and uh a lot of uh, hot spa are in uh, are in uh, Kabukicho actually. There's oh yeah, this one is also uh, a girls' bar where like uh, girls are dressed as a bunny. <laughs> so Kabukicho is a uh, kind of very dynamic and uh, very messy, but it's still uh, I think a nice area to visit. Um, should you stay here and go out here, go to a restaurant or a bar? I don't think so. I'm not sure. But I would say go to another place if you want to have some drinks and stuff. But it's cool to come here and just like enjoy the atmosphere, a little bit the, the wild atmosphere here in Kabukicho. And uh, so that's one thing to do in, uh, in Shinjuku, coming to Kabukicho and probably just hang out in, uh, in the streets. But there are more things to do in uh, in Kabukicho so I'm gonna show you one of it right now so I don't know about you but I love arcade games and I love car cards in general and in Kabukicho there's like uh, this Sega like uh, arcade so let's go and see what is inside and maybe you're gonna notice you know they have the kind of UFO catch things you know so it's very funny and uh, the, I explain you the concept, maybe you don't know it. So you pay like maybe 100 yen usually, it's kind of cheap. And then you try to kind of move this uh, like device to take something. So you kind of have hope to take a lot of things actually for just 100 yen. But most of the time it doesn't really work. So you actually usually lose money unless you are very lucky. But it's fun, you know, and I think uh, you can, of course, you can get this like stuff maybe cheaper uh, somewhere else. We went to the Don Quixote actually, so maybe it's better if you want snacks to just go to the Don Quixote. But uh, it's fun, I think, and uh, it's cool to come here. So there's not on, there's not only like Japanese snacks, but also like anime figures and uh, a lot of anime products as well. And it's very easy to use, to be honest. Uh, maybe let's check this one in, in details a little bit. So, one try is 100 yen, uh, but I think if you pay five, oh no, which is the same price actually, five, five tries is uh, like 500 yen. So one try is like one dollar, and we can have a chance to get one or even more actually of these uh, figures. 
So we are still in Kabukicho and now we're gonna see one of the most famous monster in the world. Of course you recognized it, it's Godzilla. You can see his head here and uh, we are actually getting very close to the head, so follow me. So to go to the Godzilla head, don't take these escalators actually, but just continue straight and you're gonna see the entrance of Hotel Gracery and that's where we are going. So we just go on the left and you go to the 8th floor. Before to go to the Godzilla head, at the entrance of the hotel, you can actually see all the covers of all the movies of Godzilla. Even the recent ones. But probably the best are the, the old ones. Look at this. <laughs> Look at how Godzilla looks like in 1984. It changed a lot, right? Super cool. But now let's go to the head. Let's go, let's go. Mm, Godzilla head apparently is on the left. Wow, wow. Okay, so let's go there. Oh, I think I can see it. Good job. Oh, they have a big figure, Godzilla figure over there. <laughs> With a mask. Of course, we are still in Corona time. <laughs> Very cool. And I think the, the head is over there. Oh yeah. Wow. Look at this. It's huge actually. Let's go, let's go. Wow. Wow, it's quite impressive to be honest. And I have to say it's the first time I come here after I don't know how many uh, how many years and how many times I, I visited Shinjuku in Kabukicho. Wow, super beautiful, super impressive. And I think it's a very cool place to take pictures, you know, so kind of fun pictures. And every hour there's like a show. There's like smoke going outside uh, the head. You saw it's a little bit windy, I hope you can hear me so yeah every hour there's a show you know so if you can come like maybe uh, like 6 p.m exactly or 5 p.m exactly you can gonna see a small show you know it's just a few seconds i think here we go that was big godzilla head okay so the last thing we're gonna do today is going to this place i don't know if you know what it is maybe this is a like you can guess with this picture, it's actually a batting center. So not a lot of people actually talk about it, but I think it's pretty cool to go to a batting center, even if you are really bad and it's the first time you play baseball. And to be honest, I'm really shit. I'm, I'm really bad, but I enjoy going there. So let's have a look uh, at uh, this uh, batting center. It's called just Shinjuku uh, Batting Center, and I'm gonna put the links, um, the, the Google Map link, you know, in the in the description. But let's go uh, and uh, see how it looks like. So let's go inside the Shinjuku Batting Center and I'm going to explain you how it works. It's basically very easy. You have different uh, places where you can go and the difference is mainly the, uh, the, the speed of the ball, you know. So here, it's, for example, 120 uh, kilometers per, per hour, which is a lot, 110 and you go down and it gets easier and easier and i don't know if you noticed but there are a lot of kind of uh, old school video games here like really uh kind of retro gaming kind of things and it's really good so i love to play these games as well because i'm not so good at <laughs> batting uh, usually they uh, so yeah also the price i forgot to to mention but so here for 25 tries you have to pay 300 yen, which is 30, three dollars, sorry. So it's kind of cheap, right? It's not so expensive. I want to show you maybe a little bit how a guy play, how a good guy play, maybe. Uh, maybe let's get into this one. And I'm gonna, yeah, here we go. 
he looks good. Oh, he is very good. And it maybe maybe it looks easy, but it's super difficult. It comes so fast. And first time I didn't catch anyone, any ball, like 30 tries, zero. Like, uh, wow, this one was cool. So as you can see, uh, you can also throw balls over there. So the girls just behind the guy throw balls at this this board. And I think more people, yeah, there's another guy who's playing over there. Maybe you cannot see it. It's a pretty cool place to come with friends, I think, and just have fun. Even if you are if you are really bad like me, it's not a problem, you know. So the main, uh, the main idea is to have fun. So it's the end of the video of the top 10 things to do in, uh, in Shinjuku. And to be honest, I really enjoyed and really had fun doing this video. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to uh, put some, uh, some likes and especially because it's kind of the first time I do like this kind of vlogs, you know, and uh, usually I just walk in the street, but I was thinking maybe it's maybe better to uh, kind of guide you a little bit more, you know, and, and show my face as well, show who I am. So if you like it, please comment and tell me if you want to do this kind of things more, what kind of videos do you want to see on this channel and I will do my best to do a lot more this year hopefully because yeah as you know Japan is still closed Japan is like a, not in a state of emergency anymore but the borders are still closed for tourists so I will bring Japan to you hopefully with this uh, YouTube channel so thank you very much don't forget to like to follow and see you next time for another video bye bye